All right, good morning. In this video, uh, hopefully a short video, I'm going to attempt to explain the difference between um, parallel and two-ton stub axles in T-Ban. This is primarily a video for T-Ban owners. Um, we're also going to uh, discuss, or I'll try and explain, offset. Um, the main reason for this video is uh, recently we've been doing a lot of uh, two-ton uh, and parallel uh, stub axle upgrades. Um, for a couple of reasons, durability, but there's also uh, a relatively common failure. It's not, every, it's not something everyone should be concerned about, but a relatively common failure we see in some models of TBN. So I'll get this camera turned around and I'll try and explain <coughs> the difference initially between uh, bearings, because we can just visually see them without going into the specification. These are the parallel set. They're identical bearings, the inner and outer are the same. This is the two-ton set. We refer to this as the Alco two-ton set. You can see that the inner bearing is larger than the outer bearing. The inner bearing typically takes more vertical loading. And when we compare the two-ton bearing against the parallel, this is the most common bearing in TVN. You can see physically a much larger bearing itself, which we regard as more durable. There were other bearing configurations in T-Van, very early T-Van, uh, some on slimline. In early Mark V, there were some variations primarily in five stud vans. But of course, today we're just focusing on these two most common. Today, uh, if you buy a new T-Van, they'll all come on two tonne stub axles. Track's pretty much discontinued uh, the 1.5 tonne ATM. Um, and if you buy new asymmetric arms from track directly, um, very likely they'll uh, sell you the 1.8, so they'll come on this upgraded axle anyway. The axles themselves are uh, referring to uh, is this component here. So these are bare axles, of course, haven't been installed in vans yet. So we, uh, we make some minor modifications to them. We install them, we weld them in. These are two-ton stubs. These are parallel, but we'll come back to these because I'll show you briefly... Um, what I'm referring to here when I'm talking about offset. So this is um, a good clean uh, asymmetric arm. It's just come out of a van. This customer's van is being upgraded to the two ton asymmetric arm. Offset is the distance at which the stub axle is installed in this component, which is the asymmetric arm. And uh, we use the measurement from the back of the backing plate mount to that vertical plane there, which track often refer to as the carrier plate. Now, it is often the case that the number, the offset, is actually recorded in millimetres in the lower spring seat. So this one's 190. And we measure that. That's what we get on the tape as well. Now, as uh, TVM was introduced, or at least MC2, initially we saw quite, quite small offsets. Offsets of 110 before T-Van was introduced, so much, much shallower. Um, I think the military trailers were about 110. Um, when Track introduced uh, T-Van in about 2000, 2001, they sort of snuck out to 130, and this was a really common offset. But as time passed, uh, 100 series was introduced, and this is primarily 100 series, um, the offsets uh, that were requested by customers meant that track had to continue to install these further and further out to accommodate those OE style rims. The problem with, uh, with track, there is a misunderstanding that you can change the track, you can order your van and you can, you can decide what the track should be. The track really can't be changed in uh, T-Van because the guard, the inner suspension components, the chassis, none of that stuff change, changes. What track is referring to is wheel offset um, and they're allowing you to match your uh, wheel from the car to the van. And of course they do this by changing this physical offset here. Issues really in parallel are limited mm, in most cases to these bigger offsets, the 190s, 170s, um, and we see uh, a failure, which I'll refer to as common, but the reality is there's a lot of vans getting around on 190s that have never experienced this issue and may never experience it. But, you know, as a repairer, we see it 
we, we see one at least, you know, every month. So it's common enough. Now, the problem is um, the, the way this bearing set loads this shaft, and of course it's quite thin through here, and so we see a common failure here where the uh, stub axle just shears off. And when that happens, the wheel assembly obviously just leaves the van. It can be quite destructive. I've got a van here um, that's just experienced that. We've got quite a few vans here at the moment that are here for upgrade. And so we'll have a couple of look, uh, we'll have a look at um, perhaps a couple of these axles that are about to go out for powder coat. And I'll show you how we receive our asymmetric arms from track. So track's good enough to um, supply us bare asymmetric arms and we request them like this because um, it means we can keep them in stock and quite quickly install the axles, weld them in, get them powder coated and sent out, um, as opposed to having to wait. You know, sometimes track might not have the offset we want, then there's freight as well, and you know, that can take another week. So um, we buy them like this. We simply uh, install it in a fixture, weld the axles in at the required offset. Um, we prefer our uh, carrier plate washer, which is uh, now 12 mil for production axles um, and workshops. Just be aware, you need a longer link pin if you're using our carrier plate washers, so just be aware of that if you buy a, a bush kit from Track, it'll come with these link pins. Um, ours are physically much longer. We do sell the original link pin, uh, but whenever we uh, refurb suspension or suspension overhaul, that's the one we prefer. And you can see that's where they're um, installed, just here. Um, this, uh, both both sets uh, to accommodate our vans are originally 190 offset. Um, just ignore the, these are just for powder coat protection when they go. Uh, we cover these threads, so they look a bit unusual. Um, because they go to 12 inch uh, hub drum or 12 inch brake, we have to make a slight change. So these ones are actually 175s. Um, and so same as we discussed before, measurement from here to here, 175. So they're ready to go out for powder coat, or nearly ready to go out for powder coat. We powder coat in um, a product called, or often referred to as Protex. Um, Protex um, is a very durable, uh, much more durable than the original um, gloss black, so we really appreciate it. Um, this one is an airbag van, unfortunately. Uh, not a good example, but um, you can see it's a textured finish, very, very durable. Um, so we've had really good success with that. We'll go over now and have a look at, um, well, actually on our way past, we'll have a look at um, stub axles. Um, stub axles, um, these are two-ton, as we discussed. These are parallel. Now, we still use parallel for, for a good reason. Um, when you have a look at them physically, quite a bit of difference there it's probably hard it's not really coming out on camera but uh, as dramatic as the difference is between those two inner bearings uh, the same is for these stub axles now we prefer the two ton um, it's a good bearing set I really like the uh, the configuration and of course the 12 inch um, brake it's a it's a nice upgrade it's certainly not necessary but it's nice we still do parallel but we only install parallel in chromoly. So these axles are manufactured from 4140, um, a much more durable material. In fact, this one's got 4140 written on it. Um, we do this because this process is quite expensive. Um, our preference is to buy the arms from track, install the two-ton stub axle, um, but you're buying a lot of material and then you have to also upgrade your brake backing plate, your hub drum. And so for those customers that are just trying to manage the total expense here or the, the value of this job, then what we do is we remove the original stub axles, we cut them out. We've got a process that makes it um, really quite quick and efficient. Um, we um, prepare the asymmetric arm, clean it up, and then we install them uh, but of course in only in 4140. Same for Topaz, um, we only install 4140, I don't have a sample here, but 4140 um, stub axles in Topaz as well. We don't see a common failure in Topaz, but at the same time, they're typically not abused as much as a lot of our TV and customers. This one, uh, quite a fortunate failure, as far as failures go. Um, 
This one um, is just another 190. It was a five stud um, and it had sheared off pretty much where we expect to see them shear off. Um, nothing unusual there. What was uh, unusual, what was lucky about it was um, there was very little damage to the van. The tyre obviously came off at quite slow speed. The customer has done a very crafty repair to get himself out of trouble um, and the van has come up ultimately now for a 1.8 tonne upgrade. Um, this is probably a good time to highlight though the dramatic expense that can come of this failure and this is why I'm making this video. Um, whilst I say this is common, it seems to be once a month, I don't know what the actual value is because we're, we're just one repairer, but um, it's, it's too many. Um, first of all, you're typically in the middle of nowhere, the van needs recovery, you need repair, there's freight times, if it's, especially if it's coming from you know, the eastern side of the country and the western side. The damage to vans can be really extensive. This whole back end often is just wiped out. Um, and so you're talking about, you know, numbers that are well north of $20,000. Um, and if it's in a Mark III, uh, you pretty much write a van off as a result of a stub axle failure. So again, not saying it's going to happen to everyone, but um, it's, it's, it's common enough for me to make this video. The warning is there, uh, hopefully, those owners of uh, 170, 190 in the, in the parallel are aware of it. Either manage it. There are a couple of ways to manage it. You're welcome to contact us if you'd like that uh, information. But the reality is um, you are relatively high risk. So good idea to um, consider upgrading maybe just at the next service. Um, beyond that, uh, I think that's everything I wanted to convey. Um, obviously, the bearing sizes... Um, are a worthy upgrade alone to avoid uh, the potential of stub axle failure is, is probably reason enough and I think by the time you combine that all together um, it's not bad value and, and of course we're giving you at least Atlas giving you two good upgrade pathways either go to the chrome ollie axles um, or go to the complete suspension system alternatively reach out to track of course track can um, build your arms as well all right thank you